You're listening to Kapow, the pop culture podcast. Comics, television, movies, and more. If it impacts fan culture, we have something to say about it. And now, your hosts, Jordan, Cliff, and Seth. Hey everybody, welcome back. I don't know how long it's felt to you, but to us it's felt like a long time. Yeah, that's right. My name's Jordan Lowe. I'm Cliff Barnes. I'm Seth. Yeah, so we missed a we missed a recording week. We usually record in bunches, as you may know, but we missed a week because we had some Halloween uh, goings yeah, on. Yeah. I I had uh, Dungeons and Dragons got moved to. It's my dirty little secret. It got moved to that <laughs> night. Yeah. And then we see, couldn't his, do it another night. Priorities for Halloween. Are. I do. Yeah. This ranks lower <laughs> than me playing Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I respect your honesty. Yeah. So you were you were gonna do that on like a Friday night, right? Yeah, we normally, we normally... play on Saturday, we played on Friday, and then we weren't yeah. able to record Saturday because it was Halloween. Yeah. Well, it wasn't Halloween, but it was Halloween in our town. Mm. We always have our, our Marietta where we are. We have trick or treat always the Saturday before Halloween. We don't have trick or treat on actual Halloween night. Yeah. Now next year it's all coming together. I think. Yeah. Freaking uh, Halloween thirty first on Saturday mm-hmm. night. It's a full moon. Whoa. It's the time change. It's all going to happen. We're going to blow up. We need a bunker. <laughs> I'm planning to get murdered that night. <laughs> that Saturday is also always Halloween Comic Fest at comic book stores. So I was. Mm. At the old store, handing out free comics to kids as a trick or treat gift. Mm-hmm. Uh, weather didn't really cooperate, so we didn't have much of a crowd. But we had some kids stop in and get some freebies. Yeah, yeah. I wish I, w- I, I was dressed up. I should came. You should went in there, comics. stormtrooper. Yeah, yeah. Some people thought I was a stormtrooper. Yeah, we saw some pictures <sighs> on Halloween night. So here's what happened: we took the kids trick or treating, and we had bought tickets in advance. Um, my wife and I and some family and friends, um, we decided we haven't went out for Halloween and gotten dressed up in costume and done that for a few years. So, hey, that sounds like a really good time. A local bar here in downtown Marietta, was uh, they were having a big party. And the band playing that night, um, the, the lead singer I grew up with, we, we're still friends and he's a local dentist here. And they're really fun. Like... They do, they always bring in a really good crowd. They play f- a wide variety of music, um, some songs you wouldn't expect them to play. But they've been playing together for a few years now. We've been to a bunch of their shows, so I was like, "Well, let's go do that." It sounds like a really good time. You can promote them to our giant audience. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it's it's done and over with. But <laughs> yeah, if, if you if you're in Marietta or the Mid Ohio Valley and you get a chance to go see a band, they're called the Bash. Um, they're a lot of fun. It's always a good show. So just a bunch of local um, local guys. Some of them are uh, dentists, eye doctors, stuff like that. So, uh, so yeah, but th- th- it's a really good time. So we decided that we were going to do this. We bought our tickets. So I had to come up with a costume. And since I've had Star Wars on the brain, I'm currently 29 days from my uh next walt disney world vacation um which will be my first but who's counting but who's counting uh, my first trip into into star wars galaxy's edge um which i can't wait for are you gonna dress like that down there no because i'm an adult you can't oh that's true you're not you're an adult yeah Technically, um, so anyways, so I I've had all the I was you're, like, but the costume's pretty convincing. You could just go. They might think you're a cast member. That could be. Uh, I I got the idea of what can I what would be fun for me to do that I haven't done before. I've we you know we, I've done I was night owl one year for uh, from Watchmen. Yeah, and my wife was this, uh, she went as Silk Spectre. So, um, but we've done Hallelujah. a <laughs> we've done a lot of stuff. Uh, but I've never really done the Star Wars dress up. So I was like, what's something that I can do myself? I don't want to buy a costume. Something I can make myself that would be a lot of fun, that would be recognizable, won't look super trashy. So I was like, I know, I'll be a I'll be an X-Wing rebel pilot. 
course, I didn't want to, not, not the Poe Dameron, but old school Luke Skywalker type thing. Yeah. So I made a costume. I got a uh, orange jumpsuit and I took some, I took a cardboard box and some uh, EVA foam and made the chest box. I uh, had the ho- I had a piece from our, our pool, one of the hoses. <laughs> I used uh, from the box, you know. Your best costumes have hoses. Yeah, that's right. All the best (laughs) costumes have hoses. And then I I bought, um, I I got like a really cheap plastic helmet and uh, took some more foam, EVA foam, some other foam. And uh, I made, uh, tried to make a a Rebel, you know, X-Wing pilot. But, uh, and and so we went. So how does that stand up to a night at the club? <laughs> did your helmet get well, knocked askew? Do you sweat through Surprisingly, the it did pretty well. I had like I, I I was gonna. I even bought like the um, the orange safety goggles. You know you that just, made the outfit. That that was yeah. That was the cherry on top. Yeah. So I had those. You know to try and look as oh, authentic like the beard as and everything is just like, possible. <laughs> I, I painted the, the 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 chin strap. I painted part of it white. That came with the cheap little helmet, so you know, kind of looked a little bit more authentic. But um, yeah, and I got a like we went, and I got a lot of compliments. Everybody, everybody was like, "Man, that's awesome!" You know, it's a lot of people my age, and and uh, they were like, the, the, you know, just people telling me I did a pretty good job with and it, like, right? Yeah, let's tune into our podcast. Here's a <laughs> magnet. <laughs> we talked a lot of stuff, right? Stories. Exactly, all that stuff. <laughs> so. And he wrote it off as a business expense. Yes. Um, no. Uh, we're having a really good time, and they decide apparently there's a costume contest. Now, let me tell you, pretty much everybody was dressed up. The bar was packed, and there were some really great costumes. All, I mean, just all over the board, different things, but they weren't just cheap store-bought, you know, throw your 50 bucks and... And you get a cheapo thing that you wear for one night. There was some thought and some effort put into these costumes. So I was like, oh, they're going to, the band stopped. And they're like, we're going to do the costume contest. And I was like, oh, okay. And everybody's like, well, you got to get up there. Because they're like, anybody that wants to come up thinks their costume's good enough to be in it, come up. And I'm like, no, I don't I don't want any part of that. And everybody is like, people I don't know are like, you got to get up there. Come on. Go. There are like 40 <coughs> people up on this stage at this Gold point. Gold leader standing by. Get up there. <laughs> and so I, I reluctantly, I went up and got up on stage. And I'm standing up there kind of on the end. And the one guy from the band who, he's easily the youngest guy he's the drummer he's the youngest guy out of the band and he's like he's he's like okay we're just gonna kind of cheer for any costume you got and i'm he just starts on one end and starts going through and he gets to me he's like stormtrooper and i'm like (laughs) what i'm looking are you talking about me and and people were shouting in the crowd (laughs) (laughs) that's not a stormtrooper it's a He's a pilot, you know, and people are screaming. I can hear them screaming, and it, and he says it like five times. I'm like, you, whatever. So I ended up getting down to like the last ten people on stage, and I I think honestly I might have done a little bit better had he said, "Hey, X-wing pilot." Now they probably were cheering for you as a you know. As an antidote for him screwing up, they get, you know they kept cheering like no, tell him the right thing. Yeah. So, anyways, I did, you know, better than I was up there longer than a lot of people. But the guy that won, um, he was he went as Hulk Hogan, and he was a brother. Yeah, he was a like massive dude. Looked like he worked out like every six hours every day for like three years to get you know this. Huge arms. That's commitment to a costume. Right. <laughs> I'm sure that's what it was. He really, yeah, he deserved the five yeah. bucks or whatever. So he, he ended up winning. Um, so good on him. He had a really good costume. He And he was having a really good time with it. He was uh, he was up there flexing and doing all the poses. <laughs> he had he had uh, the big mustache with, and like. He should have had like 50 shirts and just kept and ripping them off. And just kept ripping them off, them off. yeah. Yeah, so good on him for winning that. But we had a really good time. So uh, my wife and I went, and uh, with some other friends, Michael went. Uh, Michael put a costume together uh, really quick and went as uh, 
the Peter Parker from Into the Spider Verse, the older, kind of unshaven, little overweight Peter Is that Parker. What that was I thought he just <laughs> hadn't showered or something. <laughs> well, that was all part of the costume. Uh, so yeah, but we we did we had a really good work on so. after a while. Yeah. So it was a good Halloween. Good Opposite Halloween. of the Hogan guy. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> he was on a different regiment. <laughs> so, yeah, Halloween. Well, to me, Halloween always means movies. Save Martha! Puny God. I'm just a kid from Brooklyn. I'm Batman. Kneel before the sun! Under roof! You said it yourself, bitch. We're the guardians of the galaxy. So what's it gonna be, huh? Long, sullen silence? Or mean comment? Go on. You got me in a box here. Ha! 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 I'm not a huge horror buff, but I, around this time of year, I do like to watch good scary movies, so I checked out a few in the last couple of weeks. Um, I had one saved on my DVR forever called Brimstone. Never heard of it. From 2016. Guy Pierce and Dakota Fanning. Oh, and Kit Harrington from Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing. For inwardly, they are ravening wolves. Jesus is the shepherd who protects you from those wolves. And I am his dog. The sheepdog that get the lambs back on track when they stray off the path. And some of you have strayed, haven't you? Mama, are you beautiful? Reverend says he's here to take you back where he came from. I know you're there, and I know you can hear me. You may have no tongue, but there is nothing wrong with your ears. Do you know why I'm here? I'm here to punish uh, it's you. It's a, a Dutch director, and it's about these Dutch settlers in the Old West, so it's basically a Western. And Guy Pierce is this preacher who comes to town, a very fire and brimstone kind mm-hmm. of preacher. And you don't quite know, is he evil is he su- there's something wrong with him right it might even be a supernatural sort of affair but it's a dark movie and it's told kind of non-linear non-linearly so there's a four non-linear ch- movie with right. guy pierce right and it's weird him. so there's four chapters to it and they play them out of order right. so you the story unfolds differently and it's it's dark uh but it was it was really well done and he is amazing and he's terrifying especially with a dutch accent I don't know why that made him even scarier. Oh, foreign accents <laughs> always are creepy, you know. But yeah, Dakota Fanning was good, and he was great. Uh, I also ch- I checked out Unfriended from 2014, <sighs> which when that came out, I thought, Bleh. Yeah. but I saw it on some list recently of like underrated movies or oh, yeah. groundbreaking. Uh, I think it was comparing it to Blair Witch Anniversary, like movies that push the envelope or whatever. So this is the one. It was all seen through a laptop screen, and yeah. it's a couple of friends on Skype, and then somebody else joins, and they don't know who it is. And they're, yeah. So the movie, hmm. they go to Facebook and Instagram and, and Google and YouTube. So like the movie unfolds as they're opening tabs on the computer and talking to each other, and you learn the story by people like, wait, go to our Facebook page, and like scrolling down. And it's, it was novel, and it was interesting, and I read about it. It, it, it was all shot... Like, they were sitting in rooms on Skype, the actors were, and they filmed it in real time as it was going on. It doesn't quite have a payoff that was, you know, worthy of the, <laughs> the concept, but it was, it was an interesting... You should interesting... watch Searching. I remember... Yeah, it had that same so, but, well, flavor. I never saw Unfriended, but at the time when I saw Searching, they referenced that movie as, the, as Searching was just a better version yeah. of that. But, but yeah. yeah, these are yeah, teens who had bullied a girl yeah. and it's the anniversary of that so it's kind of that teen slasher movie Get back at him right uh and i watched i had seen funny games a long time ago yeah uh 
There's two versions. The 1997 original version from Austria, I had never seen the original, but the remake in 19 or 2007. Oh, no, Naomi Watts. Naomi yeah. Watts and uh, Tim Roth and Michael Pitt. Um, I had seen that one. And I had heard it was a shot for shot remake, and it was they played the original on Turner Classic Movies when I like two a.m. and like uh, it was funny the the introduction was like this is not a fun movie to watch so <laughs> you know <laughs> brace yourself but it's not the on screen violence there's barely any right but like the implication of it and the darkness and it's uh, director Michael Haneke so he made this Austrian movie in 1997 criticizing. Hollywood violence and it's a foreign film Americans don't watch those so in 2007 he remade it basically shot for shot so I had had the old one saved on my DVR because I thought I'll get around to watching it someday and I saw the remake was on so I saved them both I'm like I'm going to watch both these so like a week apart I watched oh, both wow. versions and it it what they, they changed maybe five lines of dialogue maybe a few shots here and there the main thing was uh, there were cell phones in 2007 <laughs> Right. So they had to make a reason why wouldn't they just use their cell phone to call mm-hmm. for help? So they had to kind of uh, add a tiny bit of plot there. But it is basically it's a horror movie. It's a home invasion movie. If you you saw the yeah, yeah. the remake, yes, okay, hmm. yeah. These two preppy looking kids show up at the door and start terrorizing <laughs> this family. But it's not fun in any way, and it's not uh, you know you're supposed to cheer. You know, sometimes you cheer for the murderer. You know, Freddie and Jason, they're going to get those guys. Sometimes you cheer for the people. And this one, it's like, there's no hope for these people. And it's basically, it's breaking the fourth wall at points, asking you, are you enjoying this? Are you, you like what's happening here? Mm-hmm. Yeah, revel in this a little bit. You want more blood? Like, it's asking you, why do you enjoy this? And you, at the end of the movie, you're like, I don't know. Why did I enjoy it? I didn't enjoy that. I'm sorry. <laughs> But the, the most grievous bit of violence even happens off screen. The camera follows someone into another room and you just hear it. And then the aftermath, the camera sits there for 10 minutes on the people just like crying and sobbing and grieving. And the camera doesn't move and you're just wallowing in this. Like, this isn't fun at all. I don't like this. <laughs> so yeah, not a movie I would recommend, but I, you know, it's, I, I, I've always wanted to see the original. Yeah. So glad I did. And then, speaking of original, I checked out The Haunting from 1963, hmm. uh, based on the same Shirley Jackson Haunting of Hill House mm-hmm. that the Netflix show that we very much liked last Halloween. Yeah. So I really loved that show, but I'd never seen this original version of the movie. Um, it used, I don't know how close it was to the book, I think it was closer than the, the Netflix one was. Yeah, but, the Netflix one is not close at all. Yeah, so but it used all the same names. Uh, like Hugh Crane was the dad from the show, and that's yeah. that's the guy who built the house in this movie. Luke, Thea, Theo, and Eleanor. So it's using all the character names. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, you know, a haunted house story, but in that 1963 way where you don't really see anything. It's just thumps and yeah. noises and you know pounding on the wall. And but the house, the set looked. Especially if you like the Netflix show, like the spiral staircase and the all the weird statues, mm-hmm. and they said they kind of shot the movie at weird, like slightly off angles and like slightly fisheye the lint, like just so everything looked kind of off. <laughs> you look down a hallway, it always kind of looked kind of crooked. So it was, you know, for the limitations of 1963, you're not going to see blood and guts and monsters and stuff, but it was a good psychological horror. Uh, so I, again, worth worth watching. Not the not the greatest movie I've seen, but I like like seeing that uh, mm-hmm. source material for that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, I I like a a smart horror movie, so I'm always on the lookout for something. I, so too many uh, just shocky jump scares. I avoid most. And that one had also, but I remember seeing that on that Eli Roth, like the history of horror mm. AMC did. Yeah. So I remember seeing clips from that as a acclaimed kind of right. neo or a, you know, original horror. And I heard they're going to do a second season of that. So AMC is going to do another, oh, cool. another yeah. documentary about horror movies. Netflix is doing a, another season of haunting of Hill yeah. house too. Yeah. So. I'm getting, I haven't really watched a bunch of it. If you want to, <laughs> Uh, the the year is running out there. Yeah. yeah well, I was just gonna. So I'm gonna head to Columbus tomorrow. I think to try to catch some stuff because we've reached that point in the year where I can't. Uh, things that are coming out now are not going to be out on video in time for my list. So I'm gonna have to actually go to the theater to see Uh-oh. them. Are you on pace? 
You, you, oh, no. you were way no. over 100 I'm last way, year. I'm way off pace this year because I did my top 100. So I was re-watching a bunch of movies early in the year and did not watch like anything from this year for a long time. But I'm sure I'll be... I'll have plenty of movies to make a list out of. By the... It may only be like 85. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Exactly. So It's going to be a huge disappointment. <clears throat> anyway, I, yeah, I think I'm going to head up to Columbus to catch a couple that it doesn't look are going to make it around here. And uh, so hopefully I can do that and I'll talk about them. Um, I think the only thing I really watched, I watched uh, that there was a documentary of, uh, it was actually a Dungeons and Dragons art documentary on, called eye of the beholder colon something i don't know but it's uh it was just like a video version of uh they came out with a book last year called art in arcana which you know it i just love that stuff anyway i grew up playing it and a lot of that art is very uh nostalgic for me and these guys are so talented, and it just went through. It was it was neat to see how they uh, made the art, how they commissioned it, and did, did hire different guys, and it just went through all of their different art. And it was one of the best thing I ever saw. It was uh, nice to see them talk about it and how some of the old art and the monster manuals and things did not have color. And it just felt like textbooks to us, you know. It's just like this. I almost don't want color. I want this to. This is this is important stuff, <laughs> you know. We we don't don't try to jazz it up here. We need this specific drawing of this monster. Anyway, if you are a fan of D and D or have any nostalgia for that stuff, definitely check it out. If you got Prime, it's free. Hmm. Yeah, I was just sitting here thinking, surely I watched some kind of movie here in four weeks. I'd imagine. And, you know, honestly, I think the only thing I really watched, I went back and watched The Last Jedi a couple times. <laughs> mm-hmm. Because, the, actually, since we've recorded, this, the Rise of Skywalker trailer came out, and yeah. we didn't even get a chance to talk about it. Yeah, I was thinking I might rewatch The Force Awakens and Last Jedi before December gets here. Yeah, I didn't watch the trailer because I'm already to the point of I'm good. I know enough. Yeah. Know. Well, I, I will say this, and I think I've yeah, heard it didn't other. Show. It didn't tell you. I didn't want to know. Sad C three PO, and we're all gonna die or whatever. He's like it. It really did a good job of not giving away hardly. Yeah, anything. I, I. I kind of trust them to only only show me what they need. Mm-hmm. I, there's. A lot of trailers I've been avoiding lately. I get do that more and more if I know I'm going to watch something. But I know that they real they do a good job of not revealing too much. And I feel like with Star Wars, that some things that's just it's part just, of the experience. Yeah, that's, that's an part exception. of the hype. And I, I want to I don't want to miss that. Yeah, it this, was. I'm glad I watched. It. Yeah, it like I wasn't sure what to expect. It got me. But it I, got me hyped up. Yeah, I got I got without, a little hyped. I got a little choked up. I got, yeah. and I was like, "This is it, man." Yeah, this is it. Uh, so we say. <laughs> but I like to believe this is it. Yeah. So. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So I I did after after the uh, the Star Wars trailer. Of course, the whole world seen it by now, except for Jordan. Right. Um, but once it came out, it really I I immediately I was like, I got to watch the Last Jedi. And if you're not aware. Our, this podcast we were all pretty big fans it's not perfect but we all like the last jedi we are you know much the exception when it comes to the star wars fandom these days it's the cool hip thing to do is to trash ryan johnson and the last jedi um yeah i had a customer recently for his first time in there was talking whatever and he's like oh yeah well, what'd you think of the last jedi i was like well, i liked it and he was just like, "What? Yeah, I challenged his preconceived. Like yeah. everyone hates that movie. I was like, "No, I thought it was good." Yeah, the, he's like, well, but uh, okay, that, <laughs> I love it. Shove it in their face. There's the door. You can get it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I'm still. I was in there. I witnessed a little of that the other day. I was going in the background, <laughs> and I heard some guy say, "Yeah." I, uh, I don't know if I'm going to like that Watchmen. You're like, I liked it. I'm really enjoying it. He's like, well, what kind of nerd are you? You like this stuff? Don't bring your toxic fandom in here. (laughs) So, yeah, I I hear so much. I, I, 
I listen to some Star Wars podcasts still, and they're still like, they're still trashing it. I'm like, can you? It's been how many years now? Get over it. Yeah. <laughs> like, move on. Well, I'm glad I liked it, so I don't have to be mad. Right. Oh, my gosh. So, I'm excited. I'm excited. Yeah. Yeah. So I even have some, uh, when we get there, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, even have, I feel like my perspective has changed a little mm. in the last mm. couple of years. Not of how much I like Last Jedi, but of how, what I'm expecting out of this movie and what I'm okay with. Yeah. Did you, uh, did you read the, Report from Carrie Fisher's brother this week. I have not kept up with Carrie Fisher's brother. <laughs> Jerry, Jerry no. Fisher, Jerry, yeah, <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> no, uh, there was a there was an article um, that hit online where he was discussing, uh, to his knowledge, what the actual plans were before Carrie Fisher passed. Oh, oh many. Okay. I can't say like many fishers died to get us that oh, point. But that's I can't say that's that. bad taste. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he according to this guy, uh, he says the plan originally was for Princess Leia to be the last Jedi, yeah, uh, and the rise of Skywalker. It was going to be. I know revealed. that they had more plans for her. You know, yeah. she was supposed to I finish think, it up. That, how well would that go with Odin? <laughs> <laughs> I, like yeah. the it was obvious that they were building to her and then her death yeah you know they have they've had to change some stuff i saw in the last couple of days they were talking about how they that eight minutes of footage that they used mm-hmm. and kind of you know piecing it yeah. pieced it through this movie I, and i hope it works yeah, I hope so, that, you know it doesn't feel like they shoehorn yeah, stuff in there or but, they wrote around it uh, too much but he, he says yeah the the idea was that Carrie would have wielded her her own lightsaber there at yeah, the end, but that'd been cool. That would have been cool. But I, I'm still I, I'm pretty hyped. pretty excited about. Yeah, what's now to I'm come. interested to see what changes. I I'm just a little. I don't know what JJ's going to do. Yeah, if he's gonna backtrack I, anything or anything. But I'm you know I have thought we'll, we'll wait. Saw Mark Hamill today had uh, he had some footage of his original audition. Yeah, tape. I watched that. Watch that. Yeah. Yeah. He's promoting. There's some kind of charity thing you can win. You can go have dinner with Mark Hamill. So it was promoting a, a, a charity thing, and I, he the, the world does not deserve Mark Hamill. He's the, no. He's the best. He he really is. As someone like you know Harrison Ford would rather die than talk about Star Wars. Where Mark <laughs> Hamill seems like cool, but he, like he knows he's made his peace. That's with his it. thing. Yeah. That's what the fans love, and he he seems. Uh, to, what a cross to bear. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but but yeah, it's kind of neat to watch. He he, uh, they gave him a laptop with his original audition with Harrison Ford, and he kind of you know he gives you a little input into mm-hmm. it, and like asking George questions <laughs> that he did not care to answer, yeah. like those kind of things. Yeah. So, but <laughs> if you're if you on Twitter, give Mark Hamill a follow. Um, it's definitely worth it. We're gonna give Hamill that kapow bump. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, he's already <laughs> got that. Ever since we declared him the best Joker, he's probably flying high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So this one's for you, Mark Hamill. <laughs> All right. Any other movies? I think we're on to streaming. There's something very important I forgot to tell you. What? Don't cross the streams. Violence in the streams. As of this recording, Disney Plus has not been released yet. Right. We're still a few days away. But Cliff's anxiously... He's sleeping. Oh, he's getting all his sleep now. Mm-hmm. So he doesn't have to sleep for the next couple months. Yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. It's going to be at least a week. I'm just nonstop. <laughs> Disney Plus. Um, <laughs> no, so what... So in anticipation of Disney Plus, which is coming Tuesday... Uh, I'm gonna get rid of Netflix, Ooh. and I was letting you guys know I'm gonna. They're gonna know why I got rid of Netflix. November 11th, yes, canceled. it's done. So right now I'm kind of uh, doing my final tour. Oh, that's what I did. I watched yeah. Netflix <laughs> nonstop for that last Farewell couple tower. weeks. Yeah. yeah, and uh, I was like, what? What do I need to? What do I need to finish watching? Well, it just so happened uh, a couple days ago. Working mom, something came out. No, uh, <laughs> She-Ra, season four. Ah, uh, She-Ra. Uh, yeah. Uh, in fact, Michael texted me that day. I was going to say, the yeah, Voltron was, of... Yep. 
<laughs> so yeah, DreamWorks Animation She-Ra series. Uh, He-Man's coming out to Netflix later on, so I don't I'll have to make a decision there. But um, I wanted I I wasn't sure if this was going to be the last season or not. It's She-Ra. It's season four. We are gathered here today to witness the crowning of Queen Glimmer of Bright Moon. Yeah, that's gonna take some getting used to. Glimmer, come at once. We need you in the war room right away. The horde is obviously planning something for the honor of Greystone! The princesses have no idea what's coming. How does the horde know our every move? There's a horde spy. Who are the suspects? Everyone. How are you doing that? I practice at home! <sighs> The princesses are in utter disarray. We can strike the final blow to the rebellion. If there's something that can protect us from the Horde, I need to know about it. It is time. Is it magical sacred bond time? Oh, definitely. You think you can just transform into Shira and it will fix everything? There is a great evil and it is waking up again. It was a way to channel that magic ourselves. You cannot control magic. Ugh, say things that make sense. I recently finished season two and three. It's good though. I the animation I've said before is not my favorite. Um, stylized, it's kind of uh, kind of blocky, kind of little immature in my opinion. But the story is wonderful. Um, they've taken the 80s origin of She-Ra and flipped it a little bit and they've made this very inclusive um, girl power story about friendship and what it is and what it should be and forgiveness and a whole bunch of other stuff um, throughout these four seasons and apparently it's still not over um, by the cliffhanger ending I got in season four. But I watched it all in two days. Uh, 13 episodes, I do believe. And they've I've, they've done a really good job in the storytelling, uh, just incorporating it. Each season, a lot of times with animation, first of all, a lot of times if you get back to you know the source material, um, it's a show that was very one-off. It started with a, a movie a crossover with Masters of the Universe and became a big hit. But the stories were one-offs. They It wasn't, um, you know, season one didn't have a certain subject that they were trying to tell. A certain story throughout the episodes. It was just kind of, you know, each episode is an adventure. Um, but this, they've done a really good job in, in focusing on characters, the three main characters, She-Ra, Glimmer, and Bo. Um, they're, they're the best friend squad. It sounds silly. But um, as the story has moved on, it's incorporated more and more characters, the, the other princesses and some other villains. And you, you would assume the main villain would be Hordak. In this story, because that that's was, I would assume, yeah, that. that's Obviously. what Shira was. Um, but it turns out the main villain is not Hordak; it's Katra. Um, she was her former best friend. Her <sighs> former best friend. My whoa! Boy. And uh, yeah, so I would just recommend that anyone, if you're looking for a good nostalgic ride through a '80s property, that this one is very good it's original but just enough of that 80s goodness to uh to get keep you keep you interested characters that you'll be surprised you you remember long forgotten um and it's got a great voice cast the uh <laughs> i just realized today when i was watching it after the end of the fourth season that the actress plays dina on superstore she voices uh, one of the princesses. And uh, if you watch Blackish Jr., the kid that plays Jr. on Blackish, of course, he's, he's Bo in this series. So it's got some uh, it's got some voice actors with some chops behind it. Um, and it's good. So I watched that. Uh, I caught up on a few things I watched on your sale on Netflix. I watched that Paul Rudd series, Living With Yourself. Yeah. You're welcome. Okay, so your heart broke. 
The path of life brings us many troubles. Pain, pity's talk, sadness, humiliation. How Happy Spa will rebuild your DNA better than ever. A better you. The best you can be. That's what I want. How do you feel? Happy. My, you watch I, I haven't yet. My daughter started watching it when it first came out yeah. because she thought, oh, it's Paul Rudd. This is going to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> and then she watched it a little bit and she came out of her room. She goes, um, yeah, that is not good. I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, I don't think you understood what you were, what yeah. you were uh, getting into there. Yeah. It was pretty good. I, I haven't really heard of what the plot is. I mean, I know he plays he uh, multiple. Somebody cells. suggests he goes to a spa because he's like, you know, just feel it works tough. Everything is getting run down. It's like not getting along with his wife. Things are all screwed up. And he's like, he's like, I go to the spa and I feel great afterwards. And he, you know, this is very quickly into the first episode. So my spoilers for living with yourself, been out for a few weeks. Um, he goes to the spa and he comes out, you know, well, what, <laughs> What's funny is Tom Brady's coming out of there. He's like, he's like, you've been here before? He's like, oh, I've been here like six times. It's great. You know, whatever. <laughs> Basically, the thing is, he is being cloned. And when and when you are cloned, they take the old you and just go bury you out in the woods. <laughs> and the new you has your memories, but it is a cloned body that hasn't been through anything. So you feel great. You're you have a positive attitude. You go out there and just live your life, never knowing that you have been cloned. And it's a neat premise. He, uh, you know, thing is, his body, the one out in the woods, comes out of the grave and goes back to town. So he, you know, he's half, he's living with himself, and it's a pretty interesting show. I kind of like it. Uh, I I mean, I I watched it in one day. It was you know, it's. Not very long, um, but it'll. I assume they'll do another season. It was pretty, pretty interesting. It was a little. I had some dark moments here and there, but you get a lot of different perspectives. You'll see, watch what happens, and then you'll. The next episode is from the clone's pers- perspective or from his wife's perspective or things like that. So it was interesting. Kind of goes in a cycle like that. But uh, I, I can't say it was bad. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm glad I watched it. It's yeah. Paul Rudd. I mean, yeah, it's on. Paul Rudd. And, and anytime Paul Rudd comes out with something new, I always keep an eye out. I was really surprised you didn't watch it. Well, I'm I may still circle around before Tuesday, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> I always keep an eye out when he's he's got a new something coming out for his next Conan appearance. <laughs> so I had to check out Conan when Paul Rudd was on again because uh, every time he's on Conan for like the last twenty years. <laughs> He brings that clip and they play it, and it's that scene from Mac and Me every single time. Mm-hmm. He, <laughs> it's always funny. It's always funny. Uh, I also watched, I because uh, the marvelous Mrs. Maisel, highly acclaimed uh, Amazon Prime series, um, is about to release the third season in December, I believe. And I had never watched the second season. I enjoyed the first season fine um watch the second season it was also good it's a i think mostly what i like is just that it's a period piece you know she's a woman comedian friend friends with lenny bruce and you know it's it's not the greatest thing i mean everybody it gets all it wins a lot of awards but and i i enjoy it i will watch the third season but i think it's slightly overhyped uh, I also watched the Amazon Prime series Modern Love, which is an anthology series with a bunch of different people: John Slattery, Tina Fey, Anne Hathaway. Just each different, a mm-hmm. different type of story about you know different types of love, 
you know, throughout. I think I think I saw a trailer or something for that, and it looked pretty good. It's eight or nine episodes. I didn't realize it was already. It went by pretty fast. It was. This this is what this show and that uh, is. Is Apple Plus out? Yeah, yeah. That has Mm -hmm. been Mm -hmm. released of the Jennifer. Yeah, the Steve Carell and Steve Carell. Like Mm -hmm. I think those two shows have like put me over the edge. Like there's too much. We've (laughs) hit. We've hit saturation and yeah. disney's not even out yet no yeah mm-hmm. like these are huge movie stars huge budget shows we, we don't have time for it right yeah we gotta cut some stuff uh, <laughs> my, too much. my idea was i'm watching it before disney plus comes out i was yeah. like I, I gotta see it there was some every episode wasn't fantastic but eat but some of them were really i'm so glad i watched things because they had really interesting takes on relationship dynamics and how people with problems like Anne Hathaway plays someone who's bipolar and it's kind of a musical episode because she's like super happy when she's one way and this the other way it was just demonstrating how people have problems with yeah. having relationships when they have depression and things like that so see that's the thing too is these streaming services they're they're putting you know a lot of money into these projects. They're right. quality projects. Yeah, you're, they're it's so much quality stuff. It's crazy. It's not like you remember when cable got really big. Like when we went from like twenty five channels to two hundred channels. But Most the of majority, it was garbage. yeah, it was all crap. That's what <laughs> I was thinking when I was forming this well thought out opinion. Like <laughs> that used to be the hack comedian joke. Oh, got cable. There's a hundred channels and nothing's on. Waka waka. Now there are 10,000 channels and everything's on. Yeah. Everything's pretty well worth watching. So, mm-hmm. like, there are shows that are pretty good. We said we don't have time for pretty good. Right. We don't, we don't have time for okay. Like, there's too much. And no one can subscribe to all these things. No. No one, no one has enough hours in the day to watch them all. And there's there, we're missing. We're trying. And it's even. <laughs> trying to be that guy. Just, there's going to be a backlog. We're, oh, I wanted to get to that show. Well, you yeah. never will. Forget it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Cut it loose. <laughs> I think I can do it, George. <laughs> <laughs> Don't count me out. But yeah, I mean that's that's the reality of it. You really have to pick and choose right now. Well, there's other things streaming. I've been watching quite a bit. I wanted to mention uh, there was a podcast that started recently called The Office Ladies. Oh yeah. So if you're a fan of The Office, Jenna Fisher and Angela Kenzie got mm-hmm. together and are doing. Somebody threw a bunch of money at them, and they yeah. on Earwolf. And they are doing a podcast episode by episode. We'll see if I don't. I would like. I, I don't know what the over under is on how many episodes they're actually going to get through of the hundred and eighty eight. That seems like a lot. <laughs> okay, right. okay, here's they, one about plop again. Right. Uh, what do we say? And about it's, yeah, it started out a little. I w- I didn't love the first episode, but you could tell they're nervous and they kind of kind of. It's Angela Kinsey repeats. Everything Jenna everything Fisher. Jenna Fisher says and it annoys the crap out of me, uh, but I'm sure they will get better. Yeah, and they, and they ha- are having very interesting guests. The second, third, fourth episodes have all been much better. Guys, they're going to have to do as many episodes as we've done. See, that's that, what I'm saying. To get through the office. That's the thing. Luckily, they do have. They have the commitment that we do. <laughs> people were like, I saw them on a couple morning shows doing rounds, and people were like, "This is a four year commitment." <laughs> yeah. And they were like, "Yeah, we're good with that." And I was like, "Okay, great." It's a it's a check. I mean, they're not doing it for yeah. free. <laughs> no. So there's, there's, how is any actor out of work? There's so many shows. Yeah. No actor yeah. should be without work. Right. Yeah. Well, I think Jenna Fisher's throwing. Her friend Angela a bone here <laughs> saying, "Hey, I got a job you, for you. You are going to get a check for the next." Yeah, I, I listened to that first one, and they, they made it very clear they are real life best friends and yeah. Yeah. had a real strong bond on this show. It seemed like all the actors did. They all seemed yeah, like, yeah. right. They, they got along. Well, well, it's it's definitely gotten way better. It's and, very and, interesting. They they remember more than I thought they would. They do. Yeah, and, I, and I was worried a, that they weren't going to really remember. They remember a lot of details. And they're bringing special guests in for certain episodes. Yeah. Rain Wilson's already been on. Um, Got a prop guy yeah. that, that will return because you know it was a very obvious reason to bring talk to him, and there will be more. So and and here's the when for for myself when it comes to podcasts, I always give it a few episodes because I mean. Let's face it. If you go back and look in our history, yeah. 
<laughs> like, I mean, it's not an easy thing to do. Most people would tell you, don't listen to the first few episodes of our podcast. Every podcast. <laughs> Every podcast for a reason. But I, 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 I had this idea. <laughs> Ours are up on our patron page. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got to pay for that. I, pay for the privilege. I had this great idea. I was like, okay, I've, you know, watched The Office, you know, a few times through, but just it's been a couple years ago i watched it through with my son he had never watched it all and we just enjoyed the heck out of it watching it together and i was like okay now that this podcast is out i'm going to watch each episode as they do for the um, next four years i will have freshly yeah for the next four years <laughs> i will have freshly watched the episode and they will do it that was a week and a half ago, I'm on season six, episode fifteen. <laughs> I couldn't stop. I just, yeah. and I'm just. That's all I've done is just sit and watch The Office. It's a good show, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I looked and saw that I couldn't have access it, to it for the next four years because right. next year the, it's leaving in like January. <laughs> Leaving Netflix, yeah. Yeah. isn't it? Mm-hmm. It's the it'll number be, one thing on Netflix. Yes, yeah. the number yeah. one watched thing on yeah. Netflix. Yes. And it'll be on that Peacock thing. That I'm not going to get that uh, <laughs> too much. Yeah. So I was just like, whatever. I'm watching it through, and but, it's but great. what has happened with The Office? It's the show that all these preteens and you know, ten, eleven, twelve year. 12 year old 13 14 they have all discovered it on netflix like my daughter absolutely loves the office she watches it as much as i do which is a lot and it, it always got good ratings but it was never friend seinfeld level rating. right really. right as it was airing people i mean it, it yeah. was never in danger of being canceled or anything except right at the very beginning but yeah, yeah. it definitely has so <laughs> ballooned in its <laughs> so if they years. can calm down i definitely recommend listening to that if you're a fan of the office they just need to there's i don't know some of their banter is a little yeah it, it, uh, they'll find it yeah but it's getting better and i'll definitely keep listening yeah i'm i'm listening also and i did say a thing on reddit the other day uh a guy posted that his 96 97 year old great grandmother is in a home i and, saw this. in the common room they play reality tv most of the day and yep. he, he got her turned on to the office and she thinks it's real <laughs> she thinks it's real yeah she <laughs> so, cried when yeah, jim she, and pam she's got been married. watching it really invested yeah. in these characters yeah <sighs> okay think that's it for streaming oh divorce what the hell is a sticky maple run very run that's what i do i dream and I know things. Go get him, Supergirl. Well, what's this guy look like, anyway? Oh, he's a little guy, kind of funny looking. Aha. Uh-huh. In what way? Oh, just in a general kind of way. Exterminate! Little pig, little pig! Let me in! These violent delights have violent ends. That's what she said. Groovy. Hmm. It's TV. Like we said, there's... Just- Tons of TV, so yeah. we'll just we'll do a couple. We won't stay here all night, but yeah, I um yeah, I've I've pretty much been just watching the greatest hits, but it's the last season of Modern Family. It's a yeah. show I still watch. Yeah, I watch it. It feels I've, I've always watched it. It's I feel like it kind of feels like they're wrapping it up though. Yeah, this year it, they've been. It, it's always fine. Yeah. It used to be, it was groundbreaking to me when it came when, out. What they were doing was a new thing, yeah. and I I really... It felt very hip and... Yeah. yeah. It was great. First five seasons or so were great, and it's just, all, it's just been cruising since then as far mm-hmm. as... It's kind of how... It, it hasn't taken the dive for me that the Goldbergs has. Goldbergs, I, yeah. I, I feel like I'm handcuffed to it because <laughs> I'm... I've never stopped watching it. I like the '80s nostalgia stuff, yeah. but it's garbage. Yeah. I think it's terrible. <laughs> it's the one of the worst shows I still watch. It's so funny because I was I was complaining about it the other night as we were watching it, and um, my son says he was telling me his his girlfriend just discovered it, so she's watching like the first. Yeah. three seasons so far and she like 
she thinks it's hilarious. And I'm like, yeah, it was. <laughs> it used to be great. It used to be great. <laughs> now, not so much, but yeah. Anyway, Modern Family, yeah. I, I It's done good enough that uh, I'm overall been pleased with that show yeah, throughout. Yeah, I'm going to finish riding it out. And mm-hmm. Part of the reason I don't, I don't love it when a, a, a beloved show goes off the air and people are like, no, we need more. Someone else pick it up. No, just let it end. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. every show needs to last dozens and dozens right. of years. Watch 49 uh, just was canceled after its second season. You know, it's one of those people are trying to save it, but I don't think it'll happen. But You tried. That, you did your best to I did. talk I, it up. I liked it. I'm glad I watched it. I'm fine with it ending where it did. Was there, it, yeah, there was enough closure. Yes. That yes. It, it does not need to go on. <laughs> I really don't want to feel like I have to watch it, but I, I did enjoy what there was of it. Succession se- season two ended. Yeah, it was a. I love that show. No, you know people don't really watch it, but it, you were you were just mentioning it didn't do as well as you know Watchmen's doing now. But it was a great show, and it had a great ending to the second season. So still very good. Kieran Culkin and Matthew McFadden should win awards. They are amazing. Uh, Silicon Valley's back. And that's another show that yeah, that used is, to be great. Is it the last year for that? Yeah. yeah. It used to be great, and it just doesn't do it for me no. anymore. I'll watch it till the end. But I just started it. Sorry. Uh, I had a... <laughs> free weekend of hbo last weekend yeah and season six premiered that sunday night and like the saturday afternoon or whatever i'm scrolling through seeing what's on i was like oh there's the first episode there's the second there's the third. yeah so hbo2 played every episode up to the premiere i'm like i, I recorded all of them so okay well it's great for a while. Th- i just finished the fourth season so i haven't i haven't started the fifth best one line anymore. in television still i mean if i had to come up with Best lines. I don't know. I don't know how high this would be up there, but I'll never f- forget TJ Miller saying, "You about pissed to a sh- bite." That's a, that's such a good line to a kid. He talks like you just He's, brought pissed shit fight. I know that's a lot of bleeping. Cliff, <laughs> say it one more time. <laughs> yeah, just keep going. <laughs> The cast is great. I'm loving it. It's great. So I hope uh, that bums me out that no, well, it becomes but. in the in the last couple seasons here. It's just very formulaic. Yeah. They're all doing the exact same thing. But see, I'm I'm connecting to this show in a way. I don't know anything about the tech world. I don't understand apps. Yeah. On any level. <laughs> you don't. Yeah. <laughs> but so, a show about creative people. Tr- making a go, for, you know, trying to make something, sitting around a kitchen table, yeah, creating something and being outgunned with every, you know, other everyone else has more money and more equipment and more talent and more connections, but that scrappy underdog story of someone just trying to create something and put it out in the world. I don't know why that appeals to That's me. That's when that was something good. about that. That's when it was good. It's become something else, but it it's. But yeah, the cast is terrific, oh, yeah. especially. Zach Woods, who played Gabe on The Office, yep, playing basically the same kind of character, the yeah. the spineless, you yeah. know, toady guy. But but yeah, my favorite line was he, he <laughs> about being half Comanche. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna kill those pale face SOBs. I'm gonna kill him with a knife. I'm gonna kill him with a gun. I'm gonna talk him into committing suicide. <laughs> so good. Yes. What was the? I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, it's it's pretty good. It, it just I feel like it's another thing. And I, uh, Mike Judge, I like everything I've ever seen Mike mm, Judge do. Yeah, but mm. I never think like, oh, I wonder what Mike Judge is up to. I don't know. <laughs> I never give him his due, but I ev- literally yeah. everything he's done, I like. It's been great. Yeah, I was gonna ma- throw. So I've talked about this show before, but I, it's just so. If if anybody out there, I mean, it's so. Look down. It, I this is I. It's not a guilty pleasure to me. I am not. I feel no guilt. But reality TV catches a lot of flack. You know. I, I mean, people just think it's garbage television. I get it. But there is a lot of good reality TV. Like I famously love Big Brother and Survivor and whatever. But I still one of the best shows I watch is the real world road rules challenge thing. They just call it the challenge now. It always has some different title or whatever. The champion 
of the challenge, Turbo. Welcome to the jungle, you cheeky The battle lines have been drawn. Only one team is going to walk away with one million dollars. I have got the strongest alliance that I've ever had. A lot of things are on the line here. This shit looks like it's about to go down. None of us trust each other. We are at war. Are you kidding me? Burn it out! Burn it out! Move those feet! But if you are invested like me in these... I can't believe this is still on. Yep. You know, it is the fifth sport, as Bill Simmons would say. <laughs> it is... You know, there's football, basketball, baseball, hockey, and the challenge. Yeah, these people are the most most athletic people, coupled with the fact they're like the most beautiful people, Mm -hmm. and they are now they've it's transformed into Olympians and people Mm. from Ninja Warrior and and just but also from all the MTV shows from the past. I mean, there's people from the early Real Worlds and stuff like that. Kids know who those people are now. That's I mean, what I mean. That was no. forever ago. No, but I do. Yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. If you're out there and you've continued to watch this, I've watched from the beginning. I mean, it was I like know. the MTV execs like, oh, should we, we should probably go ahead and cancel this. <laughs> Wait, no, there's someone still watching. Now right. they're yes, all oh, people are watching, and they're now and they bring people in from like they've got Big Brother winners and all, mm-hmm. all the these big characters from Big Brother are on it. And like the guy who won Big Brother this year is the one of the biggest fights he got into with the girl he was having a, a relationship with on this season was that he they he didn't had never heard of the challenge and they were telling him you would be perfect for this you are such a frat boy whatever he will definitely be on the show next year what, so what is all physical challenges it's or not, it's... not all physical okay. but like. They last year, like I said, they brought in these ninja warriors and things like that. And this Turkish guy is like a machine. He's like a Terminator, and he doesn't understand English that well. Uh-huh. And he talks in that Turkish accent. And his name is Turbo. He's on that uh, Russian show where you can kill each other or whatever. What was that <laughs> yeah. But it's like, <laughs> but it's, it's just like. It's got all these interesting characters, and and now you know all these winners. But now they've got a lot of UK characters, mm. and so this season it is USA versus UK, and you know what? But they're fighting amongst themselves. It's all about forming your team for the final. It's always about the final, ch- and the final challenge is always like climb the highest mountain in the world. You know, it's always like the biggest things because they're playing for a million dollars, you know, millions of dollars and everything because. Mm. People, I, I'm guessing other people are watching this show, but this this happens to be this week. One one character has been on for years, and the, this other girl, they've been dating the last few years, and they actually have like a, a nice relationship. Like there's all this chaos in the house, people screwing each other, and always that, and cat fighting things. But now a lot of what people worry about is how, the money because there's so much money they're throwing at them. But this guy, he he has a deformity. And you can tell that he has a chip on his shoulder about it. Like he ha- has made himself be the best at everything because of this. He would never mention it. Like he, it's just you. I just really respect the guy for it he, because he can do anything anybody else can do. And his name's Jordan, but he is, he's a, got a chip on his shoulder and he's just like, I'm the best. He's won previous season and stuff. Anyway, he it came down to him and some like the best guy on the UK this week, and it was like nail you know use a sledgehammer to nail in these railroad spikes into something. And he was it was just like you always think he's going to be at a detriment because of his deformity, and he was a freaking machine. Yeah, I wouldn't. You think you could that'd be something easy to do, but swinging a sledgehammer like hundreds of times, nailing in all these spikes, uh, he never missed it once. And he made this other guy with all working appendages look like bad, you know. 
And then right when he was done, he had looked like—I mean, he just looked like the coolest guy. And then he knelt down and proposed oh. to his girlfriend, and that it was just freaking awesome. That show is great, and I, as long as they keep putting it out, <laughs> I'm in fully invested. I mean, people that on there have died, um, not on the show, but pe- like this one girl, DM died years ago, and it's just like you get invested in like any show, and it's real. You know, so I I enjoy it. So if you're watching, I'm there with you. Don't feel the guilt. This is good stuff. It just blows my like. I remember being, remember being in like seventh grade, maybe it was like 1992 when the real world came out, the first one. And oh my gosh, I mean that was it was huge. Those oh, people yeah. were huge. Yeah, yeah, it was the first reality and by season three was is the one of the most famous seasons mm-hmm. oh yeah i watched it for years and years yeah judd winnick was mm-hmm. on that oh, season yeah. and mm-hmm. he Pedro. married the girl that he's yeah. still married to the girl that yeah. was the on, that he met yeah. on there yeah puck is yeah. probably the puck. most famous character Pedro. to ever be on yeah I, oh my gosh yeah i remember all those early seasons i remember when road rules came on and the that, one guy sorry the one guy died uh was famous uh, died of AIDS. Yeah, Pedro Zamora yeah, was yeah. on that season. Yeah. But yeah, road rules they had. They oh yeah, had, and then they. That's what this morphed from. Those mm-hmm. two things. Came they they would compete against each other. Right. Yeah, it's. I just they do the but most. Those shows aren't on anymore. Correct. No. Uh, no. I think it's been a few years now that mm-hmm. they just they just like whatever. We're just on a rotation <laughs> doing the challenge. Yeah. Anyway, whatever. Mm. I enjoy it. Okay. All right. Well, just want to remind everybody we're on YouTube. What? You can you can subscribe. You can click the little notification bell, and you'll get notified that a new episode's out. You can watch it on. They your, might on even your leave it on there. Yeah. We don't maybe put, play sometimes. music. But they can't. Yeah. If you don't play print songs, right. we'll, we'll be fine. Yeah. I think that one made it. Oh, good. Um, if you talk over them enough, they don't always catch them. Uh, we're also on Spotify, guys. What? Did you know you could find us on Spotify? I didn't you know You can that. stream Is us in app? your car. It's an app. It's a music service. Yeah, lost it's very, very popular with the kids today. Um, but yeah, you can just search Kapow on Spotify like and you'll find us. Is that something like TikTok? A t- like no, a we're, TikTok. we're not on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> we should That's be. Totally different. We should be. We'll we should be channel. TikToking. Um, but if you like, uh, if you like this podcast, check out the- our vines. <laughs> 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 leave us a review you can review us on apple podcasts on facebook um like our facebook page and google play you can myspace myspace yes friendster friendster napster whatever stir you got i'm gonna mail you a cd yeah with hours of our show on it you just have to upload it. it's a free upload we're opening a storefront where you can that- go in and rent our episodes. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Kapow busters. <laughs> that would be pretty sweet. Ah, uh, yeah. So check us out, um, you know, wherever you want. And be a patron. One dollar. Yeah. Access to unlimited stuff. <laughs> Fun yeah. stuff. We're not, not unlimited. unlimited. We do. <laughs> we do. Like it's wrong. very Sorry. limited. <laughs> I mean, what's the opposite, what's opposite, the opposite of unlimited? Of unlimited? <laughs> <laughs> so I almost just committed fraud right there. Yeah, but if if you listen to us on the Podbean app or you go to our website, uh, www.udownwithkpp.com. I haven't said that for a while. Um, you click that patron button and for a dollar, one dollar a month, or you know if you want to throw more in, that's we'll yeah, appreciate don't, that. Don't let her sell. Them. But we'll give you we'll give you a big old shout out on a show, and uh, you can have access to our private Facebook patron page. We just put up an episode. It was pretty long, <laughs> pretty long <laughs> yeah. episode where Dis, uh, we made Cliff defend Disney from some of their recent uh, right. business practices. Recent. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's it's like old. Old. And some old ones and some new ones. We get it from all angles. We're so, good. Yeah. Lord. So if you want to hear Cliff defend racist movies, yes. pay the dollar, get mm-hmm. in there. Yeah. Check out his blind spots, <laughs> Justice Mirrors. 
and uh, you can get some behind the scenes stuff too. We throw in, I'm just ignoring them. Uh, we throw I throw in some uh, some recordings in between episodes and after episodes, and uh, sometimes in the middle episodes that we cut out. All kinds of good stuff. You get to be a fly on the wall in the bunker and hear That's us right. off the air. <sighs> Hi, zippity doo da zippity a. <laughs> my name is Jordan Lowe. I'm Cliff Barnes. My oh my. I'm Seth. <laughs> Bye forever. Kapow, the pop culture podcast is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Sounds, music, and clips played during the podcast are property of copyright holders. All original content is property of www.udownwithkpp.com.